WAN characteristics. What is PPP and PPP OE? Ah, the 1980s. It was a time of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Nintendo, and ALF. And it was also a time of the planet's most popular protocol, PPP. It actually stood for the point to point protocol, and it filled in a gap. See, this was a time when we were figuring out which protocol would rule the world. There was things like IPX SPX, that was the Novell world, Apple Talk, and it goes without saying who created that one, DeckNet, oh, and there was that other small guy, TCP IP. And this list went on and on and on of all the different competitors that were trying to dominate the communication in network environments. But there was a problem. We needed all of these different protocols to work over different types of connections. And back then, that meant that we would have to adapt to those protocols to be able to communicate through those different styles. So, for example, we would have serial connections, Ethernet connections, modem connections, and so on and so forth. So we would have had to have an IPX SPX for serial, an IPX SPX for Ethernet, a TCP IP that works just with modems and a TCP IP. With, it, it would be crazy, right? So they came up with this middle ground protocol known as PPP. Its main purpose was multi-protocol encapsulation. It was the one designed to work with modems and with serial and even with Ethernet. And it would be the one that all of these would adapt to. Think of it like a big Lego piece, like those big Duplo blocks that your kids used to play with, right? You've got the standard connectors and they would design TCP IP to click right in there, right? There's its connector. And that big Duplo Lego piece was PPP. So people would design these protocols to work with PPP and snap right on there. And it was a novel thing back in those days to have them all work over one seamless network. The other beautiful thing is that PPP, which stands for the point to point protocol, I think I said that already was an industry standard. There was no vendor that created it. So I could have a Cisco router over here, an IBM router over here. We're talking the 80s, right? And they'd still be able to communicate using PPP. PPP also came loaded with a whole bunch of other features. The main one that you would want to know is authentication. I still remember the old movie Hackers with Robert Redford, where they would be outside unwiring T1 connections and tapping into them. And so authentication ensured that those kind of things couldn't happen. Other features were like multi-link. If you had multiple connections, it could bundle them into a single link. Callback. Remember, this is the age of modems to where you could dial in from your house and the system would automatically call you back. It's an added layer of security because it would call you back at a predefined number based on your user credentials. Or you might just want to consolidate long distance because that was a big deal back then by having the corporate router make that call. The thing is, is we don't live in a world of point-to-point -point connections anymore. Yeah, oh yeah, they're still out there, lots of them. But we're moving into a cloud style where everything's connected to everything. <laughs> now you're seeing this picture come up going, what on earth? So my kids like to color, right? And they're like, daddy, come color with us. And it all started where I was just like, well, I'll just kind of draw a computer. You know, this is this is daddy and, you know, my little tower down here. And then, then you know, they're, they're just going on. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, that computer, I'm, run, I'm running out of stuff. So I drew a picture of me. And so, so yeah, I, I tried to draw like, you know, the little sweatshirts where you, you kind of stick your hands in the sweatshirt. It didn't turn out that way. So just just ignore daddy right there. He's he's out, right? So uh, router switch, you know, and all of a sudden you go, okay, well, there's the internet connection that comes in. So so I'm drawing this line that goes out, and I'm like, okay, well, that goes to the central office. My, you know, my kids, they're, they're not even paying attention, although I'm thinking, man, this will be great to explain to them. And, and, and the central office has this local loop, right, that goes around the whole neighborhood, and all the houses kind of tap into that one shared connection that's coming in. So, so the question is without getting too deep into service provider networks and all that kind of stuff, although I'd love to, you guys would love it. Um, you, you might say, well, well, if this is all going through and let's just say this is phone lines, which is what DSL connections use. How do you make sure that, that these people right here who are using uh, their computer don't just come in and click on a DSL modem connection and be able to get on and use the internet, even though they're not paying for internet, only that house down there is paying for it. But that same cables feeding everything, right? So the DSL providers were looking at this going, well, how do we make sure that only the right people get on? And so they pulled out the old dinosaur PPP and said, let's make it work over Ethernet.
and PPPoE was born. They weren't really concerned with all the multi-protocol stuff, you know, IPX, SPX, Apple Talk, those have all died and gone the way of the dinosaur, but they were interested in the authentication capability of PPP. So that's what they did. They said, we're going to encapsulate everything that runs over that DSL network, just like all the protocols of old did, but we're just going to use that so these guys have to authenticate. That way somebody can't just grab a modem and plug it in. They have to plug in that modem and then fill in what is your PPPoE username and password. Only then when they authenticate correctly will the connection come up. And that is the idea of PPP and PPPoE. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.